Hello friends. In this video, we will learn about projectile motion. Projectile motion is an example of motion in two dimension, and in this case, motion generally happens in vertical plane. So the question is, what is projectile? So when you throw an object, this can be a ball with some initial velocity, and this ball moves under the gravity. Then this is called a projectile. So projectile is a object that moves under the gravity with some initial velocity, and that is projectile. And the path that it follows, the path followed by the object, is called trajectory. So two terms here we have. One is projectile, another is trajectory. So a projectile is any object that is given an initial velocity. and then follows a path determined entirely by the effect of gravitational acceleration and air resistance so if you give some initial velocity to some object and it basically moves under the gravity and there is one more force that is acting on the object that is air resistance then this object is called a projectile so what are the examples of projectile for example you can throw a ball you can throw a football you can drop a packet from a roof or you can drop a packet from airplane or you can shoot a bullet from the rifle so these all are example of projectile and the path followed by projectile is called trajectory so if you throw a ball it follows some path and finally it comes to the ground then this path is called trajectory now the projectile you are throwing it can be in any direction you can throw a projectile in the horizontal direction you can throw the projectile in the vertical direction or you can throw the projectile at some inclined angle from the horizontal so these all are example of projectile so when i am saying projectile direction can be anything only is you must have some initial velocity and it should basically move under the gravitational acceleration that is g and it should have some air resistance in this video we will assume that there is no air resistance to make the model simple so now let us try to derive theory for projectile motion so whenever we have some theory some model we derive or we develop we make some assumption and that assumption often called idealization so why we need idealization to make things simpler to make calculation simpler we try to understand the physical situation that is happening in actual with some mathematics but the mathematics cannot directly translate the actual situation and that's why we need some idealization we need some assumption so to make things simpler for a projectile motion we will make some idealization we will make some assumption what are these assumption the first assumption is projectile as a particle so we will assume that the ball or football or rifle bullet that you are throwing is a point mass this makes easy to write equation of motion because whatever we derived in the one dimension we derived for a particle so now if i assume this is a particle i can write equation of kinematics so that is one advantage the second idealization is acceleration due to gravity is constant in both magnitude and direction so we are assuming the acceleration due to gravity that is z value it's constant both in terms of magnitude so magnitude we will assume some value for example i can assume 9.8 meter per second square and the direction is also constant so this is acting in the vertical downward direction so we are assuming that magnitude and direction is constant however the magnitude is not constant if you go above the earth as you go more height as you go at more height you will see that the z value decreases 
so this kind of assumption is only valid if you are close to the earth's surface and then you are doing all this calculation and generally this is true because all the projectiles and missiles and all this this are long range and this does not go to very uh, high and that's why we can apply this theory so this is a logical assumption and the second idealization is basically third neglect the effect of air resistance so as you know any kind of fluid apply a resistance force so it can be air or it can be a fluid water so all applies resistance so in this chapter or in this video we will assume that there is no air resistance so we are assuming that air resistance are absent and that's why we can ignore the force that is coming due to the air resistance and we can apply simple equations and finally we are making another assumption that is curvature and rotation of earth is absent so we are neglecting the curvature of and rotation of the earth basically earth is not flat earth has a shape rounded shape so when you are describing projectile motion you are assuming that earth is a flat and this assumption is valid if your range of the projectile is not very large you are throwing a projectile 500 meter 600 meter 200 meter 100 meter in that case you can assume that the earth is flat but if you are throwing a missile that is a long distance in that case you have to basically consider the rotation of earth as well as curvature of earth because earth becomes rounded and you have to account for the rounded shape of the earth if the smaller range projectile you can ignore because for a small range you can assume that the earth is flat so the curvature of the earth has to be considered in the flights of long range missiles and air resistance is crucial is of crucial importance to a skydivers so you see in some cases we have to account for the air resistance and we have to also account for the curvature of earth for example if you have a long range missile you have to account for the curvature of earth and if there is a a sky driver a sky diver in that case you have to basically account for the air resistance because he is basically flowing or diving in the air only based upon the air resistance that is coming from the down so he is trying to minimize the effect of gravity by the opposing effect that is coming from the air resistance in such cases we have to analyze the motion by accounting these factors so this figure shows a typical projectile motion so you have a ball and this is thrown here with some initial velocity and this is your x axis and this is your y axis so object is moving in a plane that is contained by x y plane so this is your trajectory of object and this is in the vertical plane so we have one plane that is x y plane that is fixed so this object is not laterally moving it's not going away from the x y plane either in this case inside or it is not going outside of this plane so this is contained in this plane so what are the important thing in this case one important point that is acceleration in the x direction and acceleration in the y direction so we have given some velocity some initial velocity to this object now this object is moving so what are the acceleration in the y direction we have one acceleration and that is basically gravity now if i consider y direction is the upward direction then this gravity is in the downward direction so this will be minus z so in the y direction i have acceleration that is equals to minus z now what is the acceleration in the x direction so in this case there is no acceleration in the x direction so we can assume that ax is equals to zero so why this is in the vertical plane why this does not deflect because there is no velocity in this direction sideway deflection is not possible and gravity cannot deflect in the sideway so why vertical plane why only one plane x y plane the reason is gravity cannot deflect sideway 
and there is no sideway velocity so gravity cannot deflect so that's why the motion is restrained or contained in one vertical plane and in this case this vertical plane is x y plane only two acceleration are present ax and ay in this case ax is equals to zero because there is no force that is acting in the horizontal direction we as we have assumed that air resistance or air force is zero so that's why ax is equals to zero a y is equals to minus of gravity because we will assume that the positive direction of y axis is in the vertical direction. Now how we analyze such kind of motion? So we have a projectile, we know trajectory. The question is how we analyze such kind of motion? So analyzing a projectile motion is not a difficult task. Basically, we have learned all this. So this is just a superposition. So in this case, you see, this is a two dimensional motion in X, Y plane. And now we learned in earlier videos that how we can analyze one dimensional motion. That is, if motion is happening in a straight line. So the idea to analyze, the key idea to analyze a projectile motion is superposition. So what we will do is, we will analyze an x axis motion and y axis motion separately. So we will first try to analyze x axis motion and then we will try to analyze y motion by y axis motion and these two will basically superimpose and then I can get the total motion of this part here. For example, let's say if this object is thrown with velocity u. So u is the velocity by which this velocity, this object is thrown and at alpha angle this object has been thrown. Now what is my target? My target is to analyze this motion along the x axis and analyze this motion along the y axis. So if I want to analyze this motion along the x axis, what are the things that I need? I need what is the initial velocity along the x-axis, what is the acceleration along the x-axis, then I can use all the formula that we derived for one dimensional motion. So in one dimensional motion, we derive three formula. V square minus U square is equals to 2AS. S is equals to UT plus half a T square. And another formula V is equals to U plus a T. So these three formula that we discussed in one dimensional motion and that three formula I can apply for X motion and I can apply for Y motion. So if I want to apply for X direction, what is the initial velocity in this, in this case in the X direction? I have to take component of U. So this is U vector and then this vector will be U cos alpha and this vector will be u sine alpha. So this velocity can be decomposed with u sine alpha and u cos alpha. So initial velocity in this case, in the x direction is simply u cos alpha. What is acceleration in the x direction? In this case, there is no acceleration. Now, if I want to analyze bi-direction motion, what is the initial velocity in the y direction? That is u sine alpha. What is acceleration in the y direction? Now I have assumed that y direction is upward direction and gravity is acting in the downward direction. So in this case, acceleration will be minus g. So now I know u and a that is initial velocity and acceleration in the x direction and in the y direction now i can apply formula the three kinematical equations that we derived in the previous videos so i can use those three formula for x direction motion and y direction motion and then i can superimpose and then i can get all the results and this we'll see in this video so projectile motion Projectile motion as a combination of horizontal motion with constant velocity and vertical motion with constant acceleration. So basically projectile motion is a combination of constant velocity in the x direction. So x direction you have a constant velocity because you have initial velocity is u 
so at any time what will the v v is equals to u plus a t and acceleration is zero so v is equals to simply u and u in this case is u cos alpha so now we understand in the x direction we have a constant velocity that is u cos alpha and in the y direction we have constant acceleration that is minus g so the projectile motion is nothing i have to use the two fact that is in the horizontal direction we have constant velocity and on the vertical direction we have constant acceleration so if you use these two fact you can analyze a projectile motion now here i will illustrate the by motion of projectile is identical either you throw horizontally or you simply dro drop the ball so let us try to see these two cases in one case that is this case we have dropped a ball with rest and this ball is simply freely falling under the gravity now in this case the yellow ball we have thrown this ball with some initial horizontal speed there is no vertical velocity so you see in both cases the vertical speed is zero so either this case number 1 or this case number 2 so there are two balls one ball we have thrown in the horizontal direction one ball we have simply dropped in the vertical direction and in both cases vertical velocity is zero because this ball has been thrown horizontally so vertical velocity is zero so if you consider the vertical motion in the vertical motion both balls are same if you want to calculate by distance in vertical direction what i will use i will use s is equals to ut plus half at square in this case by is equals to ut plus half at square and y is equals to initial velocity for both ball is zero and gravity is acting in the downward direction that's why i am writing minus z and this is t square so for both ball distance cover that is by distance from the top let us say this point from where the ball has been thrown is origin 0 0 coordinate so in the vertical direction both balls are basically traveling or covering the same distance in same amount of time so this means if this ball has reached here then this yellow ball also has reached here this ball has reached here then yellow ball has also reached here so this means both balls are basically covering equal amount of distance at given point of time so even though in this case x motion is different one ball has fallen at this position one ball has fallen at this position but the by motion is identical both balls are traveling equal amount of distance in equal amount of time so i as i'm saying in this case since there is no y velocity for the second ball and the first ball both balls are simply falling under the gravity and both will follow same equation and we can calculate by distance for both the ball so we can see for this situation one ball is dropped from rest and other is projected horizontally but both projectiles fall the same distance in same time because both are freely falling under the gravity now we will try to derive expression for distance x and at any point of time what is y coordinate of a projectile when it is thrown with some angle and with some velocity so let's say i have this is my x axis and this is my y axis and this is the projectile that has been thrown at angle alpha and with initial velocity u now this will follow a projectile it will be something like this now my target is to find at any given point of time what is its x coordinate and what is its y coordinate so this is the projectile at certain point of time 
so i want to find what is the position vector of this projectile at certain point of time t so position vector means i want to know what is x coordinate what is y coordinate and as i said now we can basically decompose this motion into two direction first i will decompose in the x direction and in the x direction what is the velocity so velocity in the x direction we will have that is the initial velocity is u cos alpha so this is u cos alpha and what is the acceleration in the x direction so this denotes x direction what is the acceleration in the x direction acceleration is zero similarly y direction i can write what is the initial velocity in the y direction so in the y direction we have a velocity and that is u sin alpha and this is upper direction that's why this is positive what is the acceleration in the y direction this is minus of gravity because this is acting in the downward direction now i have to find the position vector and if you remember in previous one dimensional motion we derived our formula that is s is equals to ut plus half gt square now i will use this formula for x motion and for y motion so if i apply along the x axis i can write x distance is equals to ut and a speed in the x direction is u cos alpha and time is t and there is no acceleration in this case basically we write ut plus half at square so there is no acceleration in the x direction so what i am doing i am simply applying this equation in the x direction and then distance in the x direction is x velocity the initial velocity in the x direction is u cos alpha and acceleration in the x direction is zero so we have applied this equation in the x direction so from here i can write so this is same equation so let's remove this because next i will use the same equation for y direction so now i can write x is equals to u cos alpha times t so this is my x value now similarly i can calculate y coordinate so if i write equation of motion in the y direction i can write y is equals to what is the speed in the y direction initial speed that is u sin alpha so if you remember we have just written the initial speed is u sin alpha into t plus half into acceleration what is the acceleration in the y direction that is acting in the downward direction that's why this is minus z and this is t square so this is the equation of motion for y direction and i can write by is equals to simply u sin alpha t minus half z t square so this is my y coordinate now once i know my x and y coordinate basically i can write position vector so what is position vector x i cap by z cap so this we discussed in the previous classes also that position vector can be written as x i plus y z and in this case now i know my x what is x simply u cos alpha times t and this i so this becomes i cap so x component plus y component what is y component u sin alpha t minus half z t square and then this z cap so this is my position vector so x component of position vector is this and this is the y component of the position vector so once i know the position vector i can basically calculate magnitude of distance from the origin for example now i know my x y so this position coordinate x y i know so we can basically calculate what is the distance of this point from the origin so this is my position vector so this is r and 
if i take magnitude of this i can basically calculate what is the distance from the origin so this is origin in this case from the origin what is the distance of the point point of uh, at point p that is basically at any point of time t what is the position of this object of the position of this projectile so if i take magnitude of r i can calculate distance of projectile from the origin and the magnitude of r is nothing but under root x square plus by a square this you can basically prove for example if you want to calculate this distance and this distance is x this distance is y then you can use pythagoras theorem and then this distance that is magnitude of r will be simply under root x square plus by a square so now i can write r is equals to so this is a square root of x is u cos alpha t whole square plus by is what u sin alpha t minus half g t square and then you have to square this term and then sum and then take root so this is the distance from the origin so we calculated the position vector and distance from the origin at any given point of time now we can also calculate velocity of projectile at any point of time basically if you see if you have this projectile so this is your projectile so at any given point of time this has two component of velocity one is x component another is y component so this is your vx and this is your vy and initially it has been thrown with velocity u so once again we will use the same idea if you remember in the one dimensional motion we have a formula v is equals to u plus a t so i will use the same formula but now i will use in x direction and the y direction so if you remember x direction acceleration is zero and initial velocity in the x direction is simply u cos alpha in the y direction acceleration is minus z and the velocity in the y direction is simply u sin alpha now i have these two things and i have this kinematical equation that is v is equals to u plus a t now i can apply this formula in the x direction first that is i will take x component of velocity initial velocity and acceleration so let us apply this in the x direction so i can write vx is equals to ux ux is simply u cos alpha plus acceleration in the x direction is z zero so this is simply u cos alpha and this is t u cos alpha v is equals to u plus a t so sorry so this is not t here so simply u cos alpha so vx is equals to u cos alpha you see very important point velocity in the x direction is constant u cos alpha so this does not depend upon time so either the projectile is here or projectile is here or projectile is here in all cases the velocity in the x direction is simply u cos alpha now what about y direction i can calculate velocity in the y direction i can use this formula v is equals to u plus a t so v y is equals to u and the y direction velocity is u sin alpha plus a t and acceleration in this case is minus z times t so this becomes u sin alpha minus g t so you see the velocity in the y direction decreases and you can find at what time the velocity will be zero so basically you can find when you will have time is equals to so when this becomes zero so u sin alpha minus z t is equals to zero this gives you t is equals to u sin alpha by z so velocity in the y direction is not constant 
so first observation is velocity in the y direction decreases because u sin alpha minus zt so something is has been subtracted so velocity in the y direction is maximum here t equals to 0 and then it decreases so some point of time this velocity will be less less and at top point this velocity will be 0 now what will happen if t is greater than u sin alpha by z in that case velocity starts getting negative so after this top point the velocity will start decreasing and it will be basically negative so this will be negative and finally when this lands on the ground this will have same velocity that was initially but in the different direction that is in the opposite direction just to illustrate this bi-direction speed so let us consider so this is the projectile now the by velocity is maximum at zero that is u sine alpha now y velocity is decreasing here we'll have a smaller here we'll have a smaller even a smaller and here you will have zero velocity and then it's getting negative so increasing in the downward direction increasing in the downward direction and maximum value will have when this projectile basically hits the ground at that point of time we will have again this is u sin alpha and this you can prove by many ways one way to prove this is energy conservation since the energy of this projectile is conserved we can say the initial velocity in the vertical direction and initial velocity in the uh, horizontal direction is, is conserved and finally you will have same velocity in the vertical direction and the horizontal direction when this projectile landed so at this point of time x velocity is always constant that is u cos alpha so this is u cos alpha this is always constant this is always u cos alpha so x velocity at any point of time in the motion of projectile is always u cos alpha only the y vertical velocity is changing the y velocity is changing so this basically decreases fast comes to zero at certain point of time then it becomes negative and finally the magnitude is same as the initial velocity at the point of landing but the direction is opposite so now I know my x component of velocity and y component of velocity I can write velocity vector so what is velocity vector velocity velocity vector is equals to vx i component plus v y z component and what is x velocity this is simply u cos alpha and then I have to multiply i cap what is y velocity this is u sin alpha minus zt so this is u sin alpha minus zt and then this is z cap so this is the by velocity at any given point of time so once i know velocity i can basically calculate the speed that is magnitude of velocity so magnitude of a velocity is simply x square and velocity x square plus velocity y square and then Take the root of this then you can get the uh, magnitude of this velocity so this will be simply you have to plug in this case u cos alpha whole square plus u sine alpha minus zt and then this whole square and then take the root this is your magnitude of the velocity at any given point of time you can also calculate what is the angle alpha so this is your projectile and certain point of time this is your x velocity and this is your y component of velocity and this is your basically velocity total velocity at any given point of time then you can calculate this angle alpha certain point of time so this will be what this will be simply vy so this is vy divided by vx so you can write vy by vx and this will give you the tan alpha so in this case i can write tan alpha is equals to v by 
that is u sin alpha minus gt divided by vx that is simply u cos alpha so this is u cos alpha so in this video we have learned how to analyze projectile motion and we said projectile motion is nothing but superposition of two dimensional two direct two 1d motion so if you have two 1d motion you know how to analyze 1d motion and then you analyze 1d motion in two different direction and that is your projectile motion one important point is you should know what is the initial speed in the horizontal and vertical direction what is the acceleration in the horizontal and vertical direction and then you can use three kinematical equations once you know how to use kinematical equation you can calculate position vector of projectile at given point of time and you can calculate velocity vector of a projectile at any given point of time and you can also calculate uh, angle the the magnitude of a speed and you can also calculate magnitude of position vector and you can also calculate angle between vertical speed and horizontal speed in other words what is the angle that the projectile is making from the uh, horizontal plane so i hope you enjoyed this video and if you if you like this video then please share with your friends and i will see you in the next video thank you